to Contemporary Black Voices, where we deal with hot topics. And we got a hot one to, today to discuss, but before we do that, hey, you know, we want you all to be a part of our program. So we really look for your comments. And you know, we have what we call a mailbox messenger session. And unfortunately, I guess we were too good. We got no comments this past week, but we want to represent you out there. And if we're doing something wrong, if you think we're doing something, tell us about it. And we will read it on the air and, and discuss it with you. So hopefully next week we'll, we'll get some comments. I think we will on Hot Topics. Mm -hmm. The Hot Topic this week is about the uh, Moms for Liberty. Moms for Liberty. What I call uh, the fascists in skirts. What they are doing is going around trying to organize nationally so that moms can take control of the curriculums in the schools. Now, it's just a, a, a cover up for what they're really doing. They wanna go into our school, to schools and remove us from the history on the basis that what we're teaching our poor little kids they, they just can't, they, they just don't need to know about that right now. They're too, too young and innocent. And, and so when I, when I look at that, I think back on my, when I was in elementary school, okay, I had a, a reading book, Dick and Jane and Spot. Dick and Jane were white. Spot may be black, but he's a little dog, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> they had the white fence and the white house. Mm -hmm. And so... Was that telling the truth to me? And let's go a little further. George Washington never told a lie. He cut down the cherry tree. <laughs> truth? Come on, give me a break. And so black kids have had to go through this for decades. Decades we've had to go through that kind of crap. Now, because we're coming back and wanting our kids to learn the real truth, these Nazis want to go around and take it out of the schools. So you can tell how I feel about it. So I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I am absolutely, totally uh, opposed to these women going in and dictating. Uh, and, and the other thing, these teachers are trained. They go through, they get a degree, and they have to have the student teach first. These teachers know what should be taught to these kids. So you're gonna remove all that responsibility from teachers. Next, next thing, they go, they're gonna wanna write to fire teachers. Well, you're teaching about um, uh, Nat Turner. We're going to fire you. Whereas you don't want your little white kids to learn about Nat Turner, but our black kids should know about Nat Turner and things like that. So I'm going on and on. So I'm going to stop and turn it over to Dr. Chadwell because she's more into education. So this situation that we're seeing right now in the United States is built on the premise that white children, feelings are getting hurt when they hear anything negative about the white culture. And so there's always been a push to revise any history about black people in this country. Uh, I know in Texas, there was a movement of removing the term slave from discussions and call them indentured servants. So as a black instructor, as a black parent, we're going to have to decide, first of all, who will we allow to educate our children? And then what are we going to do to counter anything that we perceive to be going on wrong in that classroom in terms of instruction? Now, I had mentioned on an earlier show that I think we need to pull our kids out of, the, out of public schools for one day because they're getting paid a daily rate for those kids to be in those seats. And I've always said that if we pull out our kids one day a week and put them into a school where we can focus in on just black culture. Now, you got to put them in a school so the kids will not, there won't be any type of backlash to where they may be uh, uh, accused of skipping school. So you put them in a school where it's Afrocentric focus all the way, and then you put them back in school the other days of the week. But as black parents, 
we're going to have to go and either be willing to spend the money that we need to supplement and enhance what our kids may be hearing. We're going to have to have the materials in our homes to help supplement what our kids are reading and hearing. We need to show them how to find information on the internet. So I, all I can see is this, is that as long as Florida keeps pushing these hate activities out in, in, in the education system, what's gonna happen to the other states like Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, um, Arkansas, Oklahoma, What's going, what's, going to t what's going to happen to those education systems to where, you, where, the, where the leader says, you know what, I like what's going on in Florida. So we're at a crossroads. We are at a crossroads to where we need to be held accountable as to how we are educating our kids at home or in small cohorts uh, after, after school. Okay. Chris. Well, first of all, first of all, I think with those... Uh women are saying uh are, are they also the ones who are saying uh they don't want to refer to slavery as slavery they want to say it was involuntary work uh that we were doing um but more importantly this is what i want to point out uh dr chadwell said that these ladies are feeling that the children are being their uh, feelings are getting hurt there is getting hurt we ain't never heard a, a child say anything about that. I think what the real situation is, the children are going back and saying, mommy, did we do this yeah. to these people? Right. And yeah. that's where the, the problem is coming in. And, and yeah. the children are beginning to ask these questions. So they don't want the children asking these questions and they putting it off on the children when it's really the adults who are, who are doing this because the children are basically innocent. So that, that's my comment. Yeah, and you know, they talk about wanting to tell the truth. One of the biggest lies that have gone on for centuries is the word master. The word master. master. The okay. word master. Okay. These folks weren't the masters over our people. You know, a master is someone that you respect mm -hmm. and you love. And so they teach their kids, your ancestors were the masters over these people. And then they teach our kids, they were the slaves. They were the worst nightmare. And they set up the scenario that's going to last the rest of their lives on a lie, a big lie. I've always been one to push for changing the ter terms from master to oppressor. Mm -hmm. And not slave, but oppressed. They were the oppressors. And we fought back and we fought back and we fought back. And uh, I can, I know I can take, I can take pride to know that my great, great, Grandfather didn't take it. He, he, he escaped the Underground Railroad and went up into Canada. My grandfather was never born. He was born in Canada. And he was just one of thousands of, of blacks who said, we're not going to take this crap. We're getting out of here. And they needed, the schools need, they want to do something right. Hey, uh, Mom Celebrity, you want to do something right? Do away with the word master. Because you weren't anybody's masters. You're not anybody's masters I'm today. No, why? <laughs> Why? Let me, let me this is not something you calm down on. Let me say something know. else about the, about the moms. We calm liberty, down too much. About the moms for liberty and what's happening in Florida right now. So, those of us who vote in the local elections, okay, and the school board elections in particular, we're seeing evidence where more and more members of the moms for liberty trying to gain seats on the school mm. board. It's going to be important that we delve more into who is running for these election seats. Because I'm going to tell you, the, the district that I sat in, we had two interesting characters. One who was an insurrectionist, and then another one who was a member of Moms. Neither one of them got on the school board. Now, that's not saying that, that it won't change, but more and more people are starting to dig deeper into who these people are. Now, the other thing is this, Moms and Dads, you need to get a hold of the curriculum because it's, well, the, the state standards, okay? The state standards, you can, you can go to any state and it's type to go to the Texas Education Agency here in Texas. It may be the Florida Department of Education in Florida. You need to go on there and then go pull down the state standards 
for your child's grade level. And especially in, in uh, language arts, science, and in science is where I'm seeing it, in social studies, what books are being taught about us to the kids? Go purchase those books for your kids because what Florida is saying is this, we can talk about George Washington Carver, but you can't talk about his struggles. We can talk about in high school the, o the Oakley massacre, but we can't say that white folks were the people who pushed that massacre. It was the black folks who started it. Now you need to go back and read up what happened with the Oakley uh, massacre because it, it happened on an election day where black folks were trying to just yeah. do one simple thing, vote. vote. So it's going to be very, very important, mom and dad, that you start navigating those state Department of Education or education agencies, go to the standards, start downloading those standards, and then also going to your school, your schools, as for copies of the, the lesson plans, what's being taught, what's being taught, what's not being taught, so that you know how to counter any misinterpretations or any falsehoods that's being taught about us, you can correct that stuff at home. Let me just say this. Um, I'm going to push back on that a little bit and uh, be a little bit more radical. And probably what I've said on every show that we've ever had, when are we going to learn that we're going to have to do something for ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. When are we going to learn that we cannot depend on what the education system in the state, what the federal government may do? I don't see Chinese, Hispanic, or any other folks talking about they want to do this. They're taking the bull by the horns, and they're educating their kids in the way that they want to educate their kids. Yeah. The difference is, is that we're not doing that, and we feel that the American government and society owes us something, which they do, okay? They do owe us. But right now, they have refused to give that to us. And by refusing to give that to us, we need to take the responsibility and do the things for ourselves. We need to educate our own. We need, And by educating our own uh, does not only mean the kids, that means the parents becoming involved in the kids and how we teach our, our kids in everything that we do. When we begin to do that for ourselves and become proactive, then I think we become a better group of people. Now, you know, along that line, oh, you, uh, hold on this point. Uh, the Chinese visited this country, I think it was like 1935, and they talked to uh, Howard Thurman, his leading minister, mm -hmm. and, and they looked at him and said, you let other people educate your kids? That's the greatest commodity you have. Why do you do that? And I think that's what you're addressing now. We, we, I don't know how we do it. We got to stop this, man. We, we got to stop this. Um, well, let me say this on, on, on relationship to that. Yeah. The white man in this country has always and continues to be a bully, okay? And we have participated in that by being passive. Yeah. And we continue yeah. to be passive. Only until we decide to take that responsibility will things change for us. That's why I wasn't passive sitting here. <laughs> You know, those, those who know me, and given the current state of, of, of uh, what's going on in public education, I probably would have been fired by now, okay? Because I'm passionate about giving my kids everything they need to become productive citizens in the United States. But I am also have been exposed to, okay, so why are the Japanese and the Chinese, and I'm gonna say the Japanese right now, why are they scoring higher? Why are they seem to be more culturally attuned to one another? So when I used to live in Japan, the Japanese go to school six days a week. So here in the United States, the Japanese children go to public school or a private school for five days a week. And every Saturday, they have what's known as a Saturday school from eight o'clock to three o'clock. In that school, kind of going back what I suggested earlier, they have a full immersion into their culture, everything, even down to food, even down to food. They're not going to be eating hot dogs or anything. They, they start learning about the food, the history of the food and everything. So 
I really think that there needs to be a greater push in the black community if to where we need to start taking ownership to the problem as well. And so we've got a lot of buildings, a lot of church facilities on Saturdays are not open on Saturdays. Maybe we need to say, talk to those pastors, say, hey, can we use these, these facilities on Saturdays so that we can teach our kids? Yeah, you know, you, you make a good point. And I think we can turn it inward now. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking outward about them. But excuse me, what's our responsibility? I mean, these parents have to get off their butts and go to these school meetings, and we got to get out and vote. Don't these people know what's happening in this country? No, are no. they oblivious to it? A, a lot are. Movement. I think we're in the minority. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Because it's a minority, I don't know if we can win. I don't, I don't know if we can win. They got they got their stool pigeons. This Tim Scott from South Carolina. He going around smiling and 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 all the no such thing places. as racism. No yeah. such thing as racism. You know, everything was fine. Everything was fine. My granddaddy, he he said, don't worry about having to pick cotton, cause you can go from there to great things. And now we've got. And I'm so sick of these Negroes saying from the cotton fields to the Congress. They wore that one out, you know. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I think we need to. Maybe you're right. I need to cool out a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we got to turn inward and look at ourselves also. Any comments? And then the other thing here is also, parents, uh, that I did a, a quick study on Facebook and asked a question: How many of you have had a black teacher, and at what you know, in what grade level? A lot of people have not had a black teacher. The first one they may have seen was either in high school or college possibly graduate program. And I thought, and even a lot of black people said, well, you know, the first one I met was probably in high school, probably the, the coach, okay? So I put, would suggest that if you can move your child, especially in elementary, into a, t a classroom that is led by a black teacher, that may be his or her only time with a black teacher. Take, you have a right. You have a right to ask for your child to be moved into a particular classroom. And so if you have an opportunity, ask for a black teacher. Today is a perfect opportunity. When I say today, I'm talking in general, is the perfect opportunity for us to go back and demand from our churches what we need and what we want. I don't know of another institution where we can do this to be able to begin uh, the bedrock of formation of unity. And we've got to do that. No more is it my minister and the biggest Cadillac that he's got and the biggest house that well, he has. Cadillacs anymore. <laughs> Jaguars. Jaguar, okay, or BMWs and Mercedes. Yeah. You know, no more. We've got to do what we need to do for us. When you talk about Tim Scott, we should be chastising him as a community, America-wide, as opposed to, again, being passive and not doing anything. But I think you, you hit the point when you said we're in a minority. Right. We're in a minority. I, I, I remember one time I was going to the Carver Library. We were going to have a cultural event. Went by, I think it was Antioch. Park a lot full. Went by, this is on a Saturday. Went by a second bit. Park, park a lot full. Went to the library. Hardly anybody in there. What kind of story does that tell? That library, all those cars should have been at the library, and they weren't. So I don't, I don't know. It, it's frightening, Chris, when you say we're in the minority, because they're gonna, they're just gonna obliterate us, they're, they're, because they are aggressive and they're doing their game. I'm not blaming them. I don't blame them for wanting them to teach their little Johnny and Sally about, uh, about their culture. Jack and Jill. Jack, yeah, their culture. But we got to do the same thing for our kids. Man, you know, it was, it was terrible. I wasn't aware of it at the time, but it was a terrible for me to sit in that classroom and have to read about Dick and Jane. And Spy. And Spy. <laughs> You know, this is going to age a lot of us. Remember Good Times? Mm -hmm. There was a character on the show, Lil Michael. Remember Lil Michael? Yeah. He yeah. was real militant. But to me, he was lovable because he was passionate about 
who he was and his culture. We need some little Michaels. We need to develop more little Michaels, little and uh, little Angelas. I agree. Okay, we're gonna wrap up hot topics. So let me start over here, Chris. Final words. Final words from me, uh, I'm going to start taking this time to talk about anything I want to talk about. And I'm going to say I'm really happy to see I woke up this morning and to see from Instagram a message from Jamie Foxx, get well, my brother. And uh, if anybody wants to look at it, go to uh, uh, their Instagram page and look for uh, Jamie Foxx. Okay. Okay. Dr. Chabot. Okay, mom and dad, you know, the heat is on us. If you can't do it, start forming, forming those cohorts. To, to, to where you can start navigating this educational system because our kids need to know who they are because they, we come from strong, phenomenal stock. Okay, my final comment will be to Moms of Liberty. We're gonna watch you and on this show, we're gonna comment on what you're doing and hopefully it'll catch on and more and more black people will start to realize that you are not our friend, that you are our enemy and you're trying to deny our kids the right kind of education that they need minus your lies. Mm -hmm. And we're not gonna allow your lies back into our classrooms. And so that wraps it up with Contemporary Black Voices for this week. And as usual, we are telling our story our way. <laughs>